Today I'm going to run through the seven basic maintenance tasks that I think every rider should be able to do at a minimum. And that's not a snobbery thing, that's because I think these tasks are easy to learn and hard to get catastrophically wrong. And it maybe it will make you feel more confident in looking after your bike, and if you can look after your bike, it will look after you. You don't have to be an expert in setting up suspension or even understand how it works, but setting up your sag is a really good place to start and it makes a big difference. I've seen so many people with incorrect air pressure and all this can be solved with just a ruler. Pressure charts on suspension websites are just a guide and they're a starting place. The only way to know for sure that your sag is set up correctly is to use a ruler. Now what you need to do is measure the stroke on your rear suspension shock or the amount of travel on your forks. So with this I've got 170 mil forks and that's the total amount of travel. So on a calculator if we do 170 divided by 100 and times 30 then that lets me know what 30% sag is. So for this, it's 51 millimeters. So I know that if I sit on my bike and I get 51 millimeters of movement and my O-ring moves up to 51 millimeters, then I've set my forks at 30% sag. Now, 30% sag is probably a good starting point for enduro and gravity-oriented bikes. For cross-country, maybe you want 25%, but these are just baselines and you'll have to muck around with them and see what works for you. Whether you get a local bike shop to refresh your gear cables or if you've done it yourself, they'll almost certainly get slack after a few rides and that will cause the gears to skip and crunch. This is totally normal and to be expected with all new gear cables, but you'll need to know how to tighten them back up afterwards. So if you've got new or recent cables and you're trying to shift up into a bigger or an easier gear on the cassette at the rear and it's not going, perhaps it's flicking or it's just not moving at all, there's not enough tension on the derailleur to move it. And this isn't a problem with your derailleur, you're not going to have to play with that, you just play with the barrel adjuster up here. So if you're looking directly down at the barrel adjuster, down the shifter, you want to be moving it anti-clockwise, which will move the the outer cable away from the shifter and it will put tension on that inner cable and that should help you move your gears up into that easier gear. Now tip two is to always do this change while you're pedaling the bike. Now this could be moving it in a stand like I've got here or it could be pedaling the bike out on the street. Make that shift, if it doesn't move, keep adjusting the barrel adjuster anti-clockwise until it does shift and that should solve the problem going forward. We all get punctures and whether you are tubeless or still running tubes, you'll probably need to change a tire at some point. I've heard some horror stories before, but I swear most of these problems can be solved if you tick off the following tips. My first big tip to remove a tire is to make sure there's no more air in there at all. This will make it easier to manipulate. And then my next tip is to move it off the shoulder of the rim, break the bead off and move it into the central channel of the rim. This central channel will have a slightly smaller diameter than the shelf of the rim and this will leave your tire feeling a little baggier and much easier to get a tire lever into. My next big tip is to have at least two levers, uh, better to have three as well. And definitely you want some nylon or plastic levers, not metallic because they will damage your rims. So make sure they're softer than your actual rim material. And also if you can get hooks on the end, then these go a long way to holding the tire over the rim and hooking into your spokes. And that way you can use two on either side, hooked over onto your spokes and then you can even use a third one in the center to leverage it out and rotate it all the way around the rim to get it off. Now once you've done your repair or put your inner tube in, a similar principle applies to earlier where it makes things a lot easier if you can get the bead of that tire into the center of the rim and that means it won't be so tight when you chase it back round. You should be good to go. 
we mentioned torquing up bolts a lot, but what does that actually mean? Now, a torque wrench basically controls the amount of leverage you push through a bolt. Because if you over tighten something, like a stem or a brake on the handlebars, you could potentially crack the component it is clamping to, or you could round the bolt or even strip a thread. So these are very handy devices to have. So every bolt on every part of your bike will probably have a different torque setting. You'll know because it has a number followed by NM, which means Newton meters. So I've got a six Newton meters written on the part up here. I've even got 15 Newton meters written down here. And if any of the bolts don't have any writing on them, then do check your website or the manual for your parts to see what the torque setting is for that. So something like this preset torque driver only has one setting. So as you can see, it's got a big five on there and that is five Newton meters. So it will click as soon as it will get to five newton meters and it won't let you tighten anything beyond that. So for a bike, I think it's good to get an adjustable one like this, where you can rotate the dial to the appropriate newton meters. So we can choose four or five or six on this one. Alternatively, you might see these ones are more popular and this will allow you to go down to decimals of newton meters as well. Now, all you have to do is dial the bottom in order to get your correct torque setting in the window. And then you also have some extra adjustments to get 0 0.5, 0 0.8, uh, and different decimal versions of that newton meters as well. Bonus tip for you, if you're talking things up correctly and you still feel like parts are slipping, then you may need to use an assembly grease or something like a Max Grip carbon paste because this has grit in it and it'll take up the imperfections and help you talk things correctly. Tubeless tire plugs are brilliant inventions. They mean that we can often fix a puncture without taking the wheel off the bike or even the tire off of the rim. Now, my big tip for you is to find the hole by using your ear and the side of your cheek and move that wheel around so that you can hear and feel the air. And then you'll find the hole and be able to plug it. My second big tip is to make sure you push it in gently and push it in so that there's two halves either side of your plug and then it will fold in place and give you double the amount of plug in that hole. And you want to push it gently in enough that the end is just poking out enough so that it doesn't go into your tire, but also you don't want too much sticking out of the tire as the trail might rip it out along your way. Bonus tip for you here, if you have the time, a little bit of puncture repair glue around the edges will seal it in on a more permanent basis and it will make it a lot more secure. A loose headset is actually really common, but it's one of the simplest things to fix. So if you feel a knocking in the front of your bike, perhaps a rattle, or maybe your bike's even juddering when you apply the front brake down a hill, that's probably a loose headset. And the way to know for sure is to apply the front brake turn the handlebars and then get your hands around the headset area and give it a good rock. Now I can feel a knocking and I can even hear it there. So I know that headset is loose. Now this is the bolt that is compressing your headset, but what you need to do is release the tension on your stem first. Otherwise we'll be just tightening this bolt into the stem. So first loosen off the bolts on your stem and then we can tighten up this bolt. And we just do it by hand until that rattling has stopped. If you tighten it too much, you could end up pulling the star nut from the fork steerer tube out completely. Once you've tightened that up, you can go ahead and tighten up your stem bolts as this is simply just clamping around the steerer tube in order to stop that from rotating. Bonus tip here, I like to line up the handlebars with my fork crown to ensure that my steering 
is really straight, but you can stand the other side and line up your stem with your tire if you want. And finally, if you've tightened this all up and you still think your headset is loose, it could be another thing. Try undoing the top bolt and having a look at how much gap there is between the steerer and the top of the spacer or the top of the stem. There should be three to four mil difference in order to compress the headset enough. If your brakes are really noisy, perhaps they feel quite draggy, or if you spin your wheel and they come to an abrupt stop, chances are you need to realign your caliper. Now that sounds really scary, but it's actually really simple. So this noise here is the disc rubbing on the left-hand side of the pads. And that just means that this caliper is not central around the disc. And all we need to do is loosen off both bolts for this caliper and we can see that this caliper is now loose to move. So we can move that and make sure that the disc is now central. So with all your fingers out the way of the disc and the tire, moving it will allow the disc to rotate freely inside. So all we need to do is tighten this up slowly, often by eye, just to get that disc in the center and moving freely again. Okay, so that caliper is now aligned and the disc is central. However, if you've done all of this and you still have a little bit of rubbing, perhaps there's an intermittent noise, chances are your disc might not be entirely straight. Now there are tools out there like this disc chewing fork, which will allow you to straighten that disc by bending parts of it back into line. However, this will only save you on some occasions, some will be beyond saving and you might need to replace it and get a new one. But anyway, Anyway, maybe I'll save that for my next seven maintenance tips. Uh, that's all I've got time for today. So let me know down in the comments below if these are seven maintenance tips that you have tried, that you want to try, but you haven't yet. Uh, I want to know your story and perhaps we can encourage some people to try something new. Um, but for now, thanks for watching.